Well, welcome to the OCO presentation and thank you for having stayed around to um, listen to our opportunity as the last presentation for the day. Please um, take note of our disclosure that's also available on our website. So Orkorp's Nyanzaga Gold Project is regarded as one of the world's best undeveloped gold projects. The project is expected to produce nearly 250,000 ounces of gold per year for the first 10 years of production at an all-in sustaining cost of $954 per ounce, leaving us with a very healthy margin at the current gold pricing. So the project has sufficient scale longevity and margin to follow, to provide a solid foundation for the birth of a mid-tier gold producer. We have our key permits in place and well advanced with our project finance work stream. So expecting to produce the first gold towards the second half of 2025. There's not many gold projects of similar scale that's currently development ready. So Orcorp is ASX listed with the ticker code ORR, Oscar Romeo Romeo, head office in Perth. The Nianzaga Gold Project is located in the northwestern part of Tanzania, near the second largest city called Mwanza. So uh, we've got a well-established share register. 68% of the shares are held by our top 20 shareholders. We also have very well-respected mining professionals invested in Orcorp, uh, more specifically Nick Georgetta of um, uh, Regis and Equigold fame, and more recently um, Tim Goida uh, from Linetown, who's a substantial shareholder and also present here today. Um, involvement or investment from these well-respected professionals provides excellent validation of the quality of the project at hand. As a board and management team, we have a long history on the African continent, Tanzania specifically dating back to the mid-1990s with uh, Matt Yates and Alistair Morrison's involvement, and myself and Michael Davis from the early 2000s. I started my career at the Gaita Gold Mine, which is a mere 60 kilometers away from um, where we will develop the Nianzaga Gold Project. That image, um, the hill in the center of the image is the uh, main Nianzaga deposit. It is a big mineralized system at a zero cutoff grade. There's 6.3 million ounces contained in that mineralized system. Our definitive feasibility study um, economic model was based on a gold price of $1,750 per ounce, and that then returned a net present value post tax of 618 million US dollars. Now, at today's gold price of $2,000 per ounce, that NPV increases by nearly $300 million to $905 million, so a significant um, NPV for the project. The NPV at today's gold price increased to 32% and payback reduces to less than three years for the project. We are currently in this value, value what they called, having completed the definitive feasibility study. Now to me that also marks the um, next leg of the journey where there's significant value to be created through the successful project finance, delivery, and then ultimately gold production. So we do see this as, as an, an excellent opportunity for investors to um, get involved in the next leg of our journey. So the project is located in the Lake Victoria gold fields. It's a province of world-class gold endowment. There are several majors invested in that region inclusive of um, Anglo Gold Ashanti through the Gaita Gold Mine, um, Barrick with the Bulianulu Mine, which is only 40 kilometers from Nianzaga, and also North Mara to our northeast. Uh, recently, we've also seen the investment from BHP in a company called Kabanga Nickel, and there's also several large energy projects 
currently being implemented in Tanzania. The project is very well supported by infrastructure and services. We've got an existing access road that runs past the project site. We've got access to water from Lake Victoria within seven kilometers from the project, and then access to power in the national grid from the existing substation at the Bulianulu mine. Importantly, the power in the national grid is deemed green power, 32% currently generated by hydro, the balance by natural gas. There's also a new power station being constructed that will increase the hydro component to more than 70% in future. Power very competitively priced at eight cents per kilowatt hour. It is of great benefit to the project that we do have access to these infrastructures and power in particular. Um, it certainly does help the development and operations phase significantly. We completed the definitive feasibility study in August 2022 with an ore reserve of 40 million tons at plus two grams per ton for 2.6 million ounces, exceptional production profile, a long life and a large margin. Pre-production capital cost of 474 million US dollars. That involves the concurrent development of an open pit and underground and a four million ton per annum process plant. The project was costed in this high cost environment, so we remain confident with our capital cost estimate. The ore reserve is hosted in three areas. So it's the Nianzaga open pit, the Nianzaga underground, and then the small Kilimani oxide deposit. Nianzaga remains open at depth, Kilimani at depth and along strike. So the average open pit grade life of mine, 1.3 grams per ton at a 3.7 to one strip ratio, so a low strip ratio. Underground mine grade, 3.55 grams per ton over the life of mine. Four million ton per annum processing plant, very conventional flow sheet. We crush, grind to 75 microns, gravity expecting to recover approximately 30% of the gold a hole of ore leach for a production of a gold dory, 88% average uh, metallurgical recovery. Niazaga has a significant production profile. We expect to produce nearly 200,000 ounces of gold during the first 12 months of production, steadily increasing to almost 300,000 ounces per year for years five, six, and seven. So a project of significant scale. We've identified several opportunities to extend the life of mine. Firstly, an exploration target as a depth extension to the underground. Um, then there's a fourth stage pit at 1750 gold containing 8.4 million tons at 1.17 grams per ton. And then opportunity at depth and along strike at Kilimani. So we believe the combination of those three areas may add another three or five years to the current life of mine. Our exploration effort to date was largely focused on validation of the Nianzaga and Kilimani resources. We've still got an underexplored land package, both within the SML, but also our surrounding packages. We completed a drilling campaign during 2022, which intersected high-grade near-surface mineralization in the Wingi Igneous complex. That requires further drilling um, follow-up activity. That image shows the um, ferries that we currently use to cross the southern part of Lake Victoria uh, called Smith Sound. There's a new bridge being constructed. Once that's in place, it will reduce the travel time from Mwanza to, to the project area to one and a half hours, making it very attractive for our workforce to base their families in Mwanza and commute over weekends. Our project financing is well advanced. That's our key focus at the moment. We've had detailed discussions with the um, syndicate of banks comprising Tanzanian, Southern African, and European banks. Um, the independent technical engineers are now well advanced with their independent technical and ESG reviews and reporting. Uh, we've also had a proposal from one of the largest North American um, royalty and streaming groups to provide additional financing for the project. 
Um, I recently hosted a site visit that was very well received by the particular group and those discussions are well advanced. So we believe the project finance will comprise bank debt, a commodity by stream and then equity for the balance. We maintain very positive relations with our host community. Uh, we've spent a lot of effort in the community over the past two, three years, um, more specifically with regards to the resettlement action plan and continue to receive good support. Our emissions intensity for the project is expected to be 17% lower than the average for gold produced during 2020. Um, as the percentage hydro in the grid increases, that um, emissions intensity for the project will further reduce over time. We anticipate to conclude our project financing during the second half of, of this year, commence early construction activities during the same period, for first gold production expected two years thereafter, so second half 2025. So not, not something that's in the distant future, that's a mere two, two and a half years away from where we are today. So in summary, uh, we see the Nianzaga project as an excellent opportunity for us as a company to grow. It is a rare long life asset, a large margin. Um, we are currently very undervalued against our peers and we do see a lot of growth opportunity over the next two to three years and ultimately targeting gold production towards the end of 2025. So please do keep Orcorp on your radar. We believe there's a lot of value to be created over the next two years as we progress through project financing, successful development, and ultimately gold production. If you've got any further questions, please do feel free to visit us at our booth, and we'll happily continue the discussion. I thank you for your attention.